we'd like to welcome you. Hopefully where you're at, it's a little bit warmer than where we're at. And uh, maybe you have less snow. We, uh, if you're watching on, out there on, on uh, the web, uh, we uh, do have an opportunity if you, if you are, are, have, been, have, have not a church and you want to tithe, you're able to do that out there. So uh, if you follow the directions, it's really simple. Uh, we're glad that you're a part of it. We find that uh, we have anywhere from 130 to 150 to 200 sometimes uh, people who click on our, our page. We don't know how many of you are watching the services, but we're just thankful that we have an opportunity to take part. We're going to sing uh, a little chorus, and then I've got some thoughts to share with you. the deer panteth for the water so my soul longeth after thee you alone are my heart's desire and alone to worship thee you alone are my strength my shield you alone may my spirit yield you alone are my heart's Desire and a long to worship thee. You're my friend and you are my brother, even though you are a king. I love you more than any other, so much more than anything. You alone are my strength, my shield. You alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and a long to worship thee. I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of you alone are my strength, my shield. You alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and a long to worship thee. church here and we have ample room for you to come and worship with us and still keep your social distancing so that Uncle Sam will be happy with us and we just want to give that little free blurb for that. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, this is my Bible, 
By the way, I will tell you this, folks, if you're watching, we have a smaller crowd there. You're not going to hear them as loud, but here we are. This is my Bible. You have to do better than that. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the word of the Lord. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. And I'll never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, the indescribable, the ever-living seed of the word of the Lord. And I will never be the same. Amen. Well, I want to ask a question of you this morning. What kind of clay are you? Uh, when, when we were pastoring down in Hugo, Oklahoma, and a wonderful place, uh, once in a while we got called out, and uh, Karen Wood would, and, and Joe Bunfall would remember this quite well too, I'd get called out, hey, Joe's in the ditch, or Joe's stuck, and, uh, and we would go out and, and help him get out of the ditch. And I'll tell you, the red, that red clay was so good that you literally could reline your tires and get a few more miles out of them. It was almost that good. It was great. Red clay. Everything was red. Once in a while, you'd get water out of the tap, and it would come out because the lake had turned, and you'd have colored water. And uh, they said, it's just, it's, just the, it's just the iron in there. It's okay. Drink it. <laughs> if I act funny, that's why. No. So, so I, want, I, want, I want you to focus. We'll be looking at Jeremiah chapter 18. And this, of course, it's a story that, that if you've been in church, you've heard this story about the potter and the clay. And, and of course, the potter would be the Lord. And, and all throughout the scriptures, God refers to potter and clay. And we'll share some of those scriptures this morning. But we're going to begin reading at uh, verse 1, chapter 18. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, <laughs> saying, Arise. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. <laughs> then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it in another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. <laughs> then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look as the clay is in the potter's hand, so you are in my hand, O house of Israel. The word of the Lord. That's, folks, that's powerful. He goes to the potter's house and he observes that the potter makes a choice as to what the clay becomes. I, I like that. I like that. The, the story that the Lord makes reference to Israel being the clay in the hands of the potter. And I want to remind you that we are clay in the hands of the potter. In Romans, if you could turn to the New Testament, Romans chapter 9, you'll find the scriptures say, but who, this is chapter 9, verses 20 through 21, I'll let you I'll look that up. Uh, it just says, very simply, but who are you, O man, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to him who formed it? Why did you make me like this? You've never said anything like that to God. Does not the potter have the right to make out the same lump of clay, some pottery for noble purposes, and some for common uses as a water pot? Again, the Bible makes reference to mankind being in clay in the potter's hands. Isaiah chapter 45, and it just says simply, does the clay say to the potter, what are you making? And it keeps coming back to the question asking of God. A pastor said when he was in high school, and I was trying to remember back, I was in art class, and we, we made uh, paper mache masks and all sorts of things. I didn't do much on the, and I never got on the potter's wheel, but I saw a potter's wheel. That, that is all, all the qualification I've got in pottery. But every day, in fifth period class, he said, we worked with clay. And he said, throughout the year, we were given several different projects, one of which we had to sculpt something with our hands. He said, the others were to make something on the pottery wheel. And uh, he asked the question, how many of you have ever worked a pottery wheel. Some of you out in, in, in uh, cyberspace, out there in our, in our I, I, I like to call this my, my outreach church. Jabez said, Lord, uh, enlarge the areas of my tent. And God answered his prayer. And I thought, we've been praying that prayer for a long time. And, and because of COVID, we get to talk to y'all out there, uh, Nebraska, 
New Mexico, Arizona, California, uh, Texas, I mean, all over the country, East Coast, and, and it's just, it's a privilege. Anyway, so, so I, I, I thought about it. The, he said, every day at fifth period, we worked on this stuff. And he said, the first time I sat down, I took a lump of clay, I put it down to the wheel, I started, I started the foot pedal, and the clay flew off and hit the guy next to me. <laughs> uh, I didn't do that, but I probably would have. Next, he said, he said, there was a lot involved in making a, a pot. And he said, once we learned the basic ways to work the clay, the pot would take on whatever shape I gave it. And let me say, I made some pretty ugly things at first. I remember my brothers bringing home, and some of our children bringing home, some weird things they made of clay. They would roll the clay up and make it little, little things and loop it around. And they didn't ever get to do the pottery roll, but they made some crazy things and fired them. And... Judy still has a lot of the stuff our children made. Uh, this is something I noticed. And he said this, and I thought, this is, this is amazing. He said, never once during my pottery experience did the clay ever say to me what it wanted to be. And, and, and so I, I interrupt this. You know, it's kind of like if you ever watch Mike Lindell uh, with My Pillow, he always interrupts his, his commercials with more stuff. He said, so let me interrupt this, this, this illustration. I want you to get this point. The clay was totally subject to the potter's design. Did you get that? I mean, that's, that's, re that's really a big thing. We are subject to the potter's design. And, and I realize there's some significant differences. We're clay with a will. That's the difference, okay? So, so God has allowed us to have a thought process, and our rebellion sometimes against God is because our will doesn't match with God's. And... Uh, God may have wonderful plans for us, but we may never see through the plans because our own free will has made us rebel against what God asked us to do or what he was doing with us. So I want to talk to you about clay and, and things that the potter can do with the clay. And, and, and this, this, this pastor said as he worked with clay, he, worked, he learned that there were different types of clay. And, and there are three of them I want to talk to you about. First of all, there's, there's clay that's totally, almost completely not usable. And, it's, and, and that would be clay that's bone dry. And, uh, and the interesting part about this, any person who works with clay realizes that, that unless you keep it moist, that clay will dry out. And, and, and what, he no, what we notice today is that the clay once at one time was soft, it was moldable, it was pliable, you put it on the wheel, glop it down, and you start spinning the, the, the wheel, and you can work that clay into a pot or a beautiful pitcher or whatever other thing you want to do. It's moldable and pliable, but if the clay has dried out because it's not been kept moist, it's unusable. And, and there are times and things in life that happen to us that our, our clay sometimes gets bone dry. Nothing can penetrate it any longer. Uh, for, for the church, they hear the, the word preached, they come to church, Yet none of it seems to have any effect on their lives anymore. And, and uh, they close themselves off to any kind of spiritual truth. They'll, they'll sit there with their arms folded. Uh, I, I've known a lot of believers down through the years who, who are bone dry. And you can spot them. You can spot them. Uh, backsliding would be a good word. Gotten away from God. Going through the motions, but there's no life going on any longer. And, and we're not affected by truth. Peter writes in 2 Peter chapter uh, chapter twenty or chapter two verses twenty uh, through twenty three and, and a part of the next chapter. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, if they've escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord Jesus Christ, and are again entangled in it and overcome, they're worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. Now, what he says is, it would be better for them to have not known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then turn their backs on the sacred command that was passed to them. And, and then verse 22, of them, the Proverbs are true. A dog returns to his vomit. A sow that is washed goes back to her wallowing in the mud. And uh, we watch that sometimes happen in our own lives and even with our own family members sometimes. Uh, people who had a relationship with Christ who might have been there and have drifted away. Uh, I worked with a guy named Bob <clears throat> many years ago, and he was a, he was he was cool. Uh, he was he was my friend for one. But I watched him as as uh, he he'd get hot. He'd be serving the Lord, 
something else would come that would, that would catch his attention, and he would just take off. <clears throat> the next thing you know, he wasn't serving the Lord anymore. <clears throat> I worked with him for a number of years. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, he was called, there's no question, he was called to preach. He attended the same college I did, <clears throat> had left school, and was working for a company that I, when I moved to Oklahoma City, started working with him. <coughs> And, and the prospects of his ministry went away. And uh, we were at several revivals together. I actually prayed with him one time. But uh, one day he said to me, he said, I don't want to wait for heaven for my reward. I want it right now. And, he, and the last I heard, he was not serving the Lord. I've not heard from him in, since the 70s, so I don't know what's happened to him. But clearly what happened to him was that he once was moist came bone dry. And God can't do anything with a person who's backslidden unless he can break and crush them and, and, and add water and make it, I mean, it could be, they could be redone. Uh, Master Potter has to be able to shape him to his liking. Now I'm, for some of you, we kind of talked about Roy Fisher because he was one of my good friends <coughs> and he was far away from God when I met him. And for probably 12 or 13 years I called on him and I was in contact with him this, this is where the longevity of pastorship sometimes pays off. I, I, I would lose track of him. His daughter would call me, hey, Dad's in the hospital. I'd go see Daddy, and, and we'd have prayer. And, and I'd say, hey, Roy, come to church. And, I, you know, and he'd give me some excuse. But one day he had open heart surgery, and they removed part of his heart. And uh, I prayed with him there at the hospital. Nothing ever seemed to happen. But this one Saturday, I was telling him, he came by my office. And he said, what can I do? And the doctors had given him like two years to live. And he was pretty despondent. And I said, the first thing I would do, Roy, would be get your house in order. And Roy Fisher bowed down before the Lord, asked God to come into his life, forgive his sin. And from that day on until he went to heaven. Roy never missed a service. Roy was always there early. I could, I could guarantee I'd be coming down the road and there's Roy's car parked in the parking lot. 30 minutes early, he usually arrived. And, and had a place all the time where he sat. And uh, Roy's in heaven today. But it was because God was able to, because of the things in his life, break him down and make him pliable and usable for the kingdom. And that's a hallelujah thing. I, I, I'm thankful for that. And uh, there, there's only one way for a pot to be used, and it has to be crushed. It has to be uh, moistened and start all over again. Bob could have come back like Roy did, and I'm thankful for that. When, when I pray for people who are backslid and bone dry, we pray that God would, 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 uh, would and I hate to say break them, but, but break them down where they can get back to be used by God. If you re remember in, in Hosea chapter 2, uh, Hosea had a wife, and she was, she was out to no good, and, 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 and she was out in the world, and the Bible called her uh, a backslidden sinner, basically. And, and, and he was showing Hosea... Israel's situation by using his wife as an illustration. They were bone dry. And Isaiah prayed for his wife, and here's how the Lord answered in verse 2, or 6 of, of chapter 2. Therefore I'll block her path with the thorn bushes, and I'll wall her in so she can't find her way, because God was using her. And for a time, she was doing everything against God's plan. I, I thought about this. What God was doing was he, was he was hedging her in so that he could break her will. And remold her and bring her back into the fold, which he did. God was, was working with her. I, I thought about this. The Spirit of God uh, doesn't flee from us unless we totally shut him off. And, uh, and so, so a lot of times our loved ones go back into the world. And, and you know, I had a friend of mine say, you know, they've got to hit rock bottom before they're going to get back to God. And, and I think maybe he was a little hard on this, but he felt like, and that means you don't even help them out of their situation because we had to have a helping people. Here, here's the deal. God takes bone dry, crushes it, reworks it, grinds it. It has to be ground to find powder to be mixed with the water to be usable again. And, and, and so get this. The kind of clay God cannot use is bone dry clay. He has to be able to break it down and mold it and make it new. The next kind of clay God can't use is one that... that uh, isn't rock hard, but it lacks moisture too. 
And clay that lacks moisture is clay that still exists, but it can't be used because it's just, it's just a hard clump. And, and, and it has to be kneaded and, and uh, water added to it till it can be soft enough to, to, to use instead of just existing. There's a passage in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, verses 12 and 15. says, If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, or hair straw, his work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire. Fire t will test the quality of each man's work. And if, he's, if, he's built, if, he, if what he has built survives, he'll receive his reward. If it's burned up, he'll suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. And, 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 and this last verse, if it is burned up, he'll suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. The, the implication here, folks, wow. is that there are many believers who've never allowed the potter to mold them. They resist it. They've invested their lives in, in temporal things. They invest their lives in bringing satisfaction here on earth. I want what I want. I'm worthy of it. I'm worth it. The L'Oreal commercial, it costs more, but I'm worth it, you know. <laughs> it's one of my favorite ones to go after. They, they want... They want the Word, listen to me, they want the Word, the Bible, to work for them, and if they could fit, if they could get away with it, they'd remove the pages that don't fit their lifestyle or their belief system. What's wrong with the Church of Jesus Christ today is that too many pages mentally have been removed from the Word of God, and we now say, this isn't the Word of God, this is the Word of God. It's God's Word sent to us. And, and, and what's happened is a society wants to take that away, and in many mainline churches, God's word has become not relevant because if it's not divinely inspired by God and sent by man, then it's just another plan. A lot of times these people go to church. Some of them love God enough they hope to get to heaven, but not enough to have revolution. Listen, I, I believe this, that if you're born again, your life has been revolutionized and it will never be the same. They believe in salvation, they participate in worship a lot of times, but they never surrender their life to God. They live for themselves and themselves only. They're not bad people, by the way. But they don't let the potter mold them. That's tough to say, isn't it? The time when they get committed is when their world starts to fall apart. Uh, I've thought about this because most of us as Christians will have the real hot time where things get bad and we just say, Oh God, help me. And we'll be on fire. And then things get really good. And you know what happens? We just kind of drop down. Oh, it gets bad again. We get back up. And, and I think sometimes that, that tough times make us better Christians. And I'm not saying, oh, God, bring us tough times. Please don't do that. But, but you understand what I'm saying? So, so our, our goal for the Lord is, God, make me more pliable. Make me more moldable. What can you do to, to help me that way? Well, you know what makes us more, you know what makes, us, makes the clay more pliable? Water. All through the scriptures, the Bible talks about getting the water. The woman at the well was drawing water. Jesus said, let me tell you about water, that if you have of this water, you'll never thirst again. So transformed her life, she ran to town, leaving her water pot, which you never did. And she said, come meet a man who told me all the things about me and offered a water that if I drank of it, I would never need to thirst again. I like that. How can we do it? We listen to the Lord. What can I do for the kingdom is a question we could be asking. When I watch people worship, and, and by the way, um, our worship styles are so different. Uh, in the same church, there can be one who shouts and praises the Lord. There are others who will, will weep as God is touching their lives. I'm not so concerned with how you worship, but it's evident when we worship and when we don't. It's evident in how we speak. It's evident in how we live. The more we yield, more God is able to do something for us. Now there's another one too. Uh, the third clay that God can't use is clay with hidden air or sin. And, and I, I, was, I was thinking about uh, this potter was showing the folks his, his shop. And, and over in the corner was a nice pot that he had made. Good looking. He said it's a beautiful pot. And it's gone through every press process just fine. And uh, he had thrown it on the wheel. And he completed the pot. It looked beautiful. And he put all the stuff on. He was going to fire the pot. And he said, I'm going to fire this pot. I want you to understand this. When I fire the pot, we'll find out how good the pot really is. Or if it's got air in it. And only fire re results in, 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 in 
opening up the defects. And I thought about this. Uh, when we're under pressure, that's when it tells us and others who we really are. You know that. And, and uh, so, so as they're putting together this pot, and as it's spinning on the wheel, once in a while, air will get caught up in, in a chunk of clay. And, and as it goes into the oven to be fired, and they fire it, and then they put the, the uh, glaze on it, uh, it'll explode. And, and, and so the potter puts it on the fire, heats it up, and if, the air, if there's air in the thing, it'll blow up or crack and a chunk will fall off of it. And, and I thought about, you know, the, the church ha it has a lot of that, where we have a lot of people who, who look really good. And everything is shaped up nice. But when the fire gets on them, they blow up. And, uh, and, and, and so, uh, again, it's this thing where it's not, there's, there might be a hidden sin. There might be something in their lives that, that hasn't been yielded to God. And our goal, folks, is to be spotless before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. These people, and some of them praise the Lord. Uh, I was thinking, Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of the Father. And, 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 and a lot of times these folks will go to church, they, they go through the motions, but they're dry, dry, dry spiritually. And, and, and the sad part about it is that as we look out on the crowd, we can't tell. And if you're, you might be sitting next to one or not, and, and not know because we look good on the outside until the fire comes. And that's when it's revealed. When God turns the fire up on things, uh, Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 10, verse 26, Do not be afraid of them. There's nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will be not made known. I've been seeing that on the internet lately too. So God has a way of turning up the fire in our lives. Uh, the psalmist David writes this in Psalms 32, Verse 5, Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I'll confess my transgressions to the Lord. And, listen to me, you forgave the guilt of my sin. Don't you like that? So, so when, if, if we realize if we realize we have something stuck away, we confess it to God. And we say, Lord, here it is. And, and the Bible says in Proverbs 28, 13, He who conceals his sin does not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Don't you like that? We're seeking mercy, folks. We're seeking God's plan for our lives. We're seeking God to do in us that which He can. There's, there's several other areas that I could develop this morning, but, but hidden sin is one of those that we cannot play with. That's why Jesus called it. He called the Jewish leaders. I was thinking about this. He called them vipers, hypocrites, whitewashed graves. He had a few other. I think he might have called them dogs, too. Uh, because he said, you look like polished vessels. You look good on the outside, but dead on the inside because you're full of sin. Paul, Paul concludes in 1 Timothy. He says to Timothy, remember how I led by example. Remember all the challenges. Remember the tribulations that people are going through. And set the example. Set the bar high so that they can follow and find heaven their home. And, and it's time for us also to, to be vessels of the Lord. I, I thought about this. The only way God can use us, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one, is that we are the right kind of clay, the pliable clay, the, the clay that is, 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 is formable, is full of His presence. And, and, is, and, and, and that's the living water that, that if we have, we'll never thirst again. And if, if we allow Him to do that for us and keep us on track, then He can make us into vessels that are pleasing to Him. By the way, when we're done with life, because I, I, I've thought about this. There are a lot of things you and I could have done from the time we were in school and, and got out of high school or, or college. And, and, we, and by the way, most of us mapped out our life, didn't you? Had kind of a plan what you were going to do or what you were going to become. Um, in Mike's world, it didn't come out the way I planned it. God modified it quite a bit through the, through the time. Uh, and, and, and most of you here, God has changed the way that you thought it was going to be. And, and, and that's a part of the clay on the potter's wheel, letting him make you into the vessel that, that is pleasing to him. I want you to get this. If we're pleasing to God, and our lives are designed by him and blessed by him, you can't be any better than that, can you? You can't have it any better. So this morning, I'm going to ask you, to, if you would, to bow your heads and stand with me. <coughs> And as we do, I want you just to say, Lord, what kind of clay am I? Am I pliable? Am I, am I being made into the vessel that you'll be pleased with?
Or do I have some need of change in my life? And if so, it's easy to say, Lord, here I am. And especially you at home, uh, I always say make an altar. If you kneel or you sit or however you do, you say, God, here I am. If there's sin in my life, but Lord, forgive me. And we have an altar. And the reason we have an altar and we ask people to come and kneel is that they can come back on Monday and Tuesday and say, hey, that's where I gave it to God. That's where I found salvation. That's where God forgave my sin and redeemed me. And so that's why we have the altar. And then we nail it down. So 20 years later, you can look back upon the time you knelt before the Lord and you walked with Him all those years. And so as we pray this morning, I want to challenge you to ask Him to have His way with you. If His plan is to bring forgiveness, perhaps you need forgiveness. Then you say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Have mercy on me. Forgive me. He'll do that. Perhaps you, uh, you've been serving God and you've been in the church, but you just haven't got the fire you once had. Lord, stir the flames. Rekindle the fire. Forgive me for, for getting cool. And if you're on fire and you're pliable, then just spend some time saying, Lord, thank you for finding me worthy and counting me worthy to make me into something that's pleasing to you. Father, we bow before you today. We're thankful, Lord, that one day we were lost and undone, and you sought us. And you offered to us a more excellent way. And truthfully, Lord, we had no clue when we signed on where this journey would take us. Nor do we have any idea how it's going to finish. But we know this, that our faith in walking with you, no different than Abraham and Sarah, we walk with you blindly knowing that you've called us and will stay true to the fact. If there's some that need forgiveness this morning, Lord, right now we confess it to you. Forgive our sin. Bring new life in us. If we've been serving you but we've gotten cool, Lord, fire us up. And forgive us for becoming lethargic or cool or going through the motions. Lord, some this morning are just on fire and they're ready to go. I thank you, Lord, for the call and your faithfulness. We pray, Lord, you'll bless us now and draw us closer to you each day. We pray for revival that it will continue to come. We ask, God, that you'd break heavens open with your presence and your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, for this nation as well. I pray, Lord, for, for those who have need of a closer walk with you, that the fire would fall. Father, I pray that you'll allow us to have time to bring others into the kingdom. We ask these things in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence and for your promises. Amen and amen. amen. Now, as your hands are up like this, may the God of peace fill you. May he use your story to touch others. Go with God. I love you. We'll see you next Sunday morning. God bless you.